Many of you might not be aware what I actually do for a living as a profession. Specifically, I work in alternative fuels and transportation, which sometimes means I get to take different types of vehicles that run on different non-gasoline or diesel fuels and take them around the state of Ohio or elsewhere. Specifically, we have a 2015 Chevy Trax here with us that's powered by CNG that is headed to Indianapolis for another fleet to test drive. So I thought it would be really fun to show how a CNG vehicle is very similar to gasoline and diesel and show some of the differences and also show how you refuel with it. So first things first, let's talk about what is the same on this type of CNG vehicle. So if you look immediately within the engine bay, everything is gonna look the same. You have your air intake, you have uh, a 1.4 liter Ecotec engine here. There's actually a turbocharger attached to it, coolant, everything underneath the hood is gonna look the same. Where things get a little bit different, is when you look at the refueling and the tank storage. Uh, compressed natural gas is literal natural gas, the same stuff coming out of your uh, at-home cooking, and it's being compressed into a tank into the uh, vehicle here. So what you can see here is this is just a simple uh, nozzle. It's a, just a, uh, a male receiver that is feeding natural gas into, we're at, looking at the trunk here, into, here, I'm gonna try to brighten it up, a cylinder, and it just sits in the back here, covered up a little bit, it takes up a little bit of trunk space, and that is where the compressed natural gas is stored. And we're compressing that up to 3,600 PSI, 3,600. Uh, in comparison, you look at like 32 for a tire, so it's a very compressed fuel, and the reason why we compress it up to 3,600 is so that it has as much energy as gasoline or diesel. Uh, so we're doing that compression, storing it on board, and in general, we're actually getting a very similar, we're getting very similar vehicle performance uh, on this Chevy Trax. Same MPG, uh, similar torque spec, everything to that effect. As far as the vehicle is concerned, it doesn't really know what it's running differently on. There's a little bit of tuning involved to make it not run on gasoline or diesel and run on CNG. But other than that, the interior, as you can see here, instrument cluster, steering wheel, everything is exactly the same as you'd find in a traditional Chevy Trax. And to show how we get all that compression done, you can actually hear the low hum right now. What, we, what we're seeing right here is the natural gas line is coming in it's being uh, treated a little bit and then compressed. That's that hum that you're hearing. And compressors, those are literally just engines that are just moving the same way that they do when they're creating energy for a car to go, uh, but rather they're just simply compressing the natural gas to be stored in cylinders, which I'll try to get a shot here. You can see right here, some cylindrical cylinder, or sorry, those are um, spherical cylinders, and that is storing our natural gas. So then from there, it goes underneath the ground to these various dispensers. Uh, at first glance, it actually looks exactly like a gasoline dispenser, uh, but when you take a closer look, you're gonna notice that the hardware is a little bit different for the receptacle. And what we have here is a light duty uh, a nozzle that is able to provide enough compressed natural gas at a certain rate. And then we have a black one, which is a little bit beefier. And this is used on class eight tractors, basically bigger uh, vehicles that take more uh, compressed natural gas. So to help the fill time be of the same equivalency in time, you just simply allow for greater flow. So to show how we refuel, all you simply do is uh, just do a credit transaction. So all that's handled over there. Uh, similar to how you find in various states at different uh, gas stations. And then you take your nozzle. It's a little bit difficult to do one-handed, so please bear with me a little bit. And if you look in, you'll see the little grabbers, which will cinch up and, and cinch down, depending on how you move the lever here. So what I'm gonna do, so I had to cheat a little bit and use both hands, but you'll see that I have the nozzle on here now. And this lever, when it's fully opened, that's what allows it to go onto the connector. And then what you do is you tighten it up. When you tighten it up, that's actually opening up the tank and opening up a loop 
back to the dispenser. So this is what we call a closed loop system in that since methane, natural gas, is a gas, it's gonna escape if we let it loose. So to prevent that, we keep it as a closed loop system. That way it's all pressurized, contained, and it's actually safer in that case. That way there's less likelihood of a leak happening. So with that engaged, you simply just uh, turn it on and let it go. At this point in my shooting, a semi-truck had pulled up to refuel, which was creating a little bit too much background noise, so I wanted to do an audio dub in. So the Chevy Trax is refueling, as well as the semi-truck, and the background noise is the sound of the compression moving through the inner workings of the infrastructure, as well as compression being built up at the compressors I showed at the earlier portion of the video. Another thing I'd also like to point out, and this is something that can be a little bit deeper on the chemistry on how it works. Compressed natural gas, since it's a gas, gases expand and contract with temperature. So we are shooting for 3600 PSI at an, an approximate temperature, but if it's hotter or colder outside, that compression is going to change. But in general, we are shooting for having the same energy content, so when it's colder, that's going to mean that means that the gas is shrinking up whereas if it's hotter the gas is expanding more so you'll see here uh, that our compression is actually jumping around a bit as it's being measured off the tank and that's okay again when it's hotter outside you're going to be dealing with a higher compression rate because you're trying the gas is wanting to expand and you're wanting to compress it down and when it's colder outside the vice versa you're wanting to package the same amount of energy in there so it's a little bit different in how the it's it's not just a simple gallon measurement we are able to have a gasoline gallon equivalent estimation but it's actually being measured just on the compression and how that is calculated so it's a little bit different than dealing with a liquid fuel but you're getting that same energy readout and then once you're done you just simply disengage it and put it right back on the podium and there you go all in it's a pretty equivalent uh, time setup to filling up with gasoline or diesel. Um, the one thing that can differentiate is if you're refueling during a busy time. So at a station like this, there's a lot of uh, class eight semi trucks like what I had in the background B-roll that are gonna be refueling over and over and that's gonna make the compressors work on overdrive. That, uh, if you're dealing with that for uh, you know minutes and hours at a time, that can sometimes draw down the compression and cause the refuel time to take a little bit longer. But in general, you're going to be dealing on a typical day, a pretty quiet night like this, you're going to be dealing with the same uh, refuel time as you have with gasoline or diesel. So that's a CNG vehicle in a nutshell. Uh, in general, the reason why natural gas is used over gasoline or diesel is that there can be a fuel cost savings, especially if you're running a lot of fuel uh, over a given year. And there's also an emission savings too. Compared to gasoline, we're looking at about 11% uh, greenhouse gas emission reduction just because natural gas is a less carbon intensive fuel versus gasoline. And in diesel, we're able to see, uh, you know, anywhere in between 25 to 33% reduction in general greenhouse gas emissions and also uh, a dramatic improvement in uh, fuel cost savings as well. So that's that on natural gas. I'll see if I might be able to get some other alternative fuels into the mix here. I know typically I do auto how to fix it videos, but in this case, I thought it'd just be a fun way to change up and show a different topic, especially something that I work in in my regular day to day. Thanks again, everyone, for tuning in, and I'll catch you in the next video.